What's the difference between low rep, heavy weight training and high rep, low weight training? Find out what I think in today's Q&A. Hey everyone, Selwyn here from winstrength.com where the goal of the channel is to help you get a little bit stronger every single day. Thanks for clicking on another Win Strength 5 Minute Friday Q&A episode where I attempt to answer your questions in under five minutes. Um, be sure to subscribe so you don't miss out on any future answers. And if you do have a question you want answered in a future video, make sure to drop them in the comments below and I'll get that in a future video. So this is a great question from my buddy Pat. So let's start the timer. Um, so again, this is a great question and I, I want to take the time to go over some of the practical considerations uh, for when you may want to include high reps or low reps in your training. Um, they kind of go hand in hand. So when, obviously when we're doing low rep training, we're doing heavy weights. And when we're doing high rep training, we're probably going to be doing some light to weights. Um, and the first biggest question is whenever you're looking at what to include, uh, when you're looking at programming is the biggest question is, is this appropriate now? Because almost anything can work and it comes down to right now for your specific training block and your specific goals, is this an appropriate course of action? Um, for strength outcomes, it would be pretty easy to say that lower rep training is all that matters. Um, but yes, they're very important and will probably make up 90% of your program. Uh, especially when it comes to like say a powerlifting style training where you're really focusing on one rep for three exercises. But to say that all that matters are, are low reps is uh, getting a little bit too abstract because just like we don't ever perform three exercises over and over again, we're training variants of those. We're not ever just performing heavy singles and training. We need to build up um, volume as well because that's going to play a part of your training because one rep range isn't the best way to take training. Um, so yes, for strength, you definitely want to stick in that lower rep range for the most part because that dictates that you are playing with heavy weights and to get stronger, you need to lift heavier weights. Um, but when we shift over to hypertrophy goals, uh, that's a little bit more varied. Uh, the research actually shows that training anywhere from 30 to 85% of your one rep max can have similar outcomes in hypertrophy. Um, anything below that 30% of your one rep max is kind of below that threshold. So uh, curling five pounds for infinity reps is probably not gonna help you put on any significant bicep size. Um, but most people don't really train in that 20% range anyway. So what that practically means is you can train from anywhere from three to 35 reps and have similar hypertrophic outcomes. Um, obviously you need to match tonnage. So if your tonnage for three reps is a thousand pounds and you want to do that in 35 reps, you have to match the weight, divide things out, do some math and make sure that you're lifting your overall tonnage is still that thousand pounds of weight broken down in however many reps you want. Um, and then effort level. So we're kind of reaching failure, but not quite getting to failure. Uh, so when we look at hypertrophy, uh, it's a little bit more complex. Obviously, strength is easy, lower reps, heavier weights, but we need to vary out of that. But when you look at hypertrophy, which you might be interested in, uh, there's a little bit more variability with how we can approach this. Uh, but when we do go under those five rep ranges, when we're looking purely at hypertrophy, um, you're going to get a huge effect, obviously, on strength. Uh, but you're not going to get as optimal results in hypertrophy given the same inputs. But, and then as we get closer to muscular failure, the costs of that training on the metabolism and the, the body's resources start to increase exponentially while the returns only really increase linearly. So what happens is we see this huge um, spike in cost to the body and physical toll on the body and stress. Uh, but we don't really get that bigger, that we don't get the similar effect on uh, training returns. So we can't train to failure every single day, uh, which means we have to taper that down, staying in that two to three uh, reps in reserve or seven to nine RPE, making sure we always leave one to three reps in the tank when we're training uh, is going to be a good way to balance out and get that most sustainable way of training while still getting those good returns. So we're trying to balance obviously stress and adaptation and stress and recovery are these three things that are kind of playing around on the scale, having to find that fine balance between the, between all three of them. Uh, and funnily enough, when it comes to training, uh, research is showing that 
when we stick to one rep range, so if we only ever lifted fives or threes or tens, um, the body starts to show less returns on that just because some of that adaptation happens a lot quicker. So we start to see diminishing marginal returns happening a lot quicker because we're not stressing the body in a variety of different ways. This is why I don't think you should be dogmatic with your approach to strength training. And that also comes down to sets, reps, and weights. Always be looking at how to vary that up in a strategic and tactical way. It's so not just randomly throwing in, I'm going to do three reps today, then 10 reps tomorrow, then 15 reps next week. We're looking at how we build upon that and how we have progressive overload. I think we did it. So I'll leave it at that. Um, again, don't be dogmatic with your reps. Don't be dogmatic with anything really. If you got some value out of that answer, hit that like button down below. Um, be sure to subscribe so you don't miss out on any future episodes. Uh, I've created a playlist of all of the five minute Friday Q and A. So be sure to click on that at the end of the video. Uh, that way you can catch up on previous episodes and not miss out on any future ones. Again, if you have any questions you might have, uh, be sure to drop them in the comments below. That way I can answer them in a future video. Uh, thanks for watching. This has been Salon from Wind Strength. And remember to never stop learning and to never stop lifting.